Penn State, uh, talking about quasi-conformal realizations of U-duality groups, minimal representations, and ADS-CFT dualities. Oh, thank you. Well, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation to speak at this workshop in this beautiful place where I spent my first postdoctoral appointment. In fact, it's great to see Ken here, you know, the graduate student here, working with Adriano Di Giacomo, and I think Leonardo was an undergraduate there. And uh, my office was right across from Augusto's, which is now occupied by the dean, I believe. Anyway, uh, it's a great pleasure to be back, and uh, also this is a place where I wrote my first paper on supersymmetry to prove it. I'll uh, project it on the screen. Uh, as the title mentioned, exceptional. My, so the very early days of supersymmetry, this was before the classification by cats of all the super algebras. My dream or goal was to find the exceptional super algebra whose gauging will lead to supergravity, which unifies all the interactions. But as you know, the story evolved in ways were, in a sense, disappointing, in ways surprising. But we're still looking for that uh, unification at the quantum level. But that is something that I did at the time, I think came back later, this concept of defining generalized space-time using Jordan algebras uh, and the magic square, which will be part of my talk today. Okay, now what I'll be talking about, I'll be very brief for the first part, the U-duality groups. Uh, and then talk about some work I did with Sergio on the orbits of BPS black holes in five dimensions, or extremal black holes, I should say. How that, that led to the proposal that 4D UDLTI groups should act as spectrum generating conformal groups of the five dimensional super gravity theories, and its extension to three dimensional UDLTI groups that are acting as quasi conformal spectrum generating symmetry groups of 4D extremal black holes was done with uh, Kjopsel and Nikolai. And then a concrete framework for uh, realizing this proposal. And uh, remarkably, these quasi-conformal groups, when you quantize that geometric action, leads to what I call the minimal unitary representations. And I'll talk about the connection between the minimal unitary representation in harmonic superspace in the inequality supersymmetric context in four dimensions. And then I'll tell you about what they have to do with ADS-CFT dualities and these minimal unitary representations. And we'll see that minimal unitary representations are actually what you know, all know, work with, if you do any ADS-CFT type work. These are the singletons and doubletons for the super algebra that you know. But then I'll talk about the idea of the, and I'll act like the quarks of the positive energy unitary representations. That I'll talk about the quarks of the UDLTI groups, if you want, especially in particular the maximum supergravity theory. Okay. Well, let me remind you of some work we did back in '83 where the magic square came into theoretical physics in full glory. The, this is the Bosonic sector of maximum Einstein supergravity in five dimensions, done with Townsend and Sierra. Uh, this five dimensional equals maximum Einstein supergravity theory describes the coupling of mv minus one vector multiples to equals supergravity. If you combine the indices of the vector multiplets, the vector and the vector multiples and the gravity four time, you label it by a single index i, i goes from uh, 1 to NV. And the entire theory is determined by this C tensor. That's one of the remarkable things about these theories. The only thing you need to make sure is that the C tensor leads to 
Okay, here is a term that are positive definite. Other than that, it's, it's, it's unique. I mean, it uniquely determines the, uh, the theory. And remarkably, if you insist that the scalar manifold be a symmetric space, g over h such that g is a symmetry of the Lagrangian, one finds that there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between these theories and Jordan algebras of degree 3. Euclidean Jordan algebra of degree 3. Euclidean is this technical uh, definition of the Euclideanness. Uh, anyway, so the, the connection comes that if you, in the Jordan algebra, you construct a cubic norm using the C tensor, and you can use that C tensor to construct a Maxwell Einstein supergravity theory with symmetric target spaces. By the way, yeah, as I said in the, my first paper on supersymmetry, I introduced this concept. So I'm going to use the concept that you're familiar with, namely in the two by two context, where you know you can represent a four vector by a two by two emission matrix. This automorphism group is just a rotation group. Its invariance group of norm is the Lorentz group, and the invariance group of the light like separation is the conformal group. I'll use the same language for all the Jordan algebras. For your algebras defined by Dirac gamma matrices, Euclidean, in D dimensions, these are the ordinary rotation, Lorentz, and conformal groups. But if you use other Jordan algebras, other by and Hermitian matrices over various division algebras, you get these kind of groups as the conformal groups, these as the Lorentz groups, and these are the rotation groups. Okay. So I will really, when I talk about the conformal group of, uh, say, exceptionally Jordan algebra, this is E7 minus 25. This Lorentz group is this. This is a different real form of E6 with a maximum compact subgroup of 4. So now, of all the maximum Einstein supergravity theories with symmetric target spaces, 4 are very special. They are unified in the sense that by a combination of U duality and supersymmetry, you can map any field into any other field in the theory. Okay? So there exist only four of them with symmetric target spaces. They are defined by your algebras of degree three, simple your algebra of degree three. And uh, the symmetries in five, four, and three dimensions give you the symmetry groups of the magic square. That's why we call them magical supergravity theories. Sergio likes to call them magic supergravity theories. I guess in Italian it's a magico. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so in five dimensions, the scale manifolds are here. These are the numerators of the u duality groups in five dimensions. And then there is this generic family, but they are not unified, defined by non simple Jordan algebra of degree three, and their isometric groups are here. I should maybe mention as a footnote, though I won't talk about it today, 20 years after the work with Sierra and Thompson, with Zeigerman, show that there exist actually three infinite families of unified Maxwell Einstein supergraph series in five dimensions. They are defined by Lorentzian Jordan algebras of arbitrary degree. Remarkably, the three of the lowest lying members you know, are equivalent to three of the magical supergravity theories. But the other infinite tower there. Uh, their, uh, their, home, their scale numbers are neither symmetric nor homogeneous. That's why they are more difficult to analyze. And anyway, I won't talk about these theories here. Now, when you dimension reduce these theories, now in five dimensions, all the vector fields form a single representation of, of the, the u duality group. And the scale level is just the Lorentz group of the Jordan algebra over the automorphism group, which is the rotation group. And I'll be talking about only the theories defined by Jordan algebra for reasons that will become clear. When you reduce it to four dimensions, the scalar manifold becomes the conformal group of the Jordan algebra, modeled out by the compact form of the Lorentz group times U1. If you want, this is the Lorentz group times dilatations will be what sits inside the conformal group by using the compact form of them. And this is well, the bosonic action in four dimensions. And the correspondence between vector fields and the elements of the Jordan algebra in four dimensions, go to correspondence between the field strengths of the vector fields and their magnetic duals and elements of what are known as foreign triple systems. These are formally represented by two by two matrices. Along the diagonal, you put the singlets, real numbers, off diagonal elements of the Jordan algebra. 
Well, this longer dinos, this field strength and its magnetic field are the are associated with the gravity photon that comes from sorry the, the vector field that comes from the gravity photon graviton in five dimensions. So they are singles on the five dimension UDLD group. Uh, remarkably, the automorphism group of this front be isomorphic to the conformal group of the ordinal algebra. Okay, uh, if you reduce it further to three dimensions, you get quaternion symmetric spaces of the exceptional groups for these four magical theories, and for the generic family, you get this space. Now, I should mention that the exceptional A equals two supergravity has some remarkable features that are common with the maximum of n equals h supergravity. They are, it's a unified theory. It is the group of the E series as its UD out group, five, four, and three dimensions, but a different real form. What's more is that you can couple hypermultiples to that theory, whereas in the n equals h supergravity, you have no matter couplings allowed. Okay, and in three dimensions, n equals h supergravity, the A test is its global symmetry group, Whereas uh, uh, Maxwell, sorry, this exceptional supergravity theory has E8 minus 24, and in four dimensions it has E7 minus 25. Anyway, with Sergio, we, it was 97, using the fact that the entropy of a BPS black hole is given by the cubic band that constructed out the charges of the black hole. We get a classification of the orbits under the action of the reality group. Well, we found two families of orbits with non-vanishing entropy. These were known, these are the BPS solutions. Non-BPS solutions were found later with Sergio. And, but but the, the, the orbits we gave already in the original paper. We also gave the orbits of the inequality 5 d supergravity. In that case, you can have one eight BPS, one fourth BPS, one one half BPS states, and uh, the orbits of sorry, the, the yeah, this is right. The black holes with one half and one quarter BPS black holes, they have vanishing entropy. So, if the entropy vanishes, what it means is that the that solution has a larger symmetry than the Lorentz group, uh, than the U algebra, which is the Lorentz group of the Jordan algebra, namely. It's invariant under the special conformal transformations of the Jordan algebra. Okay, just like uh, you know, light pipe vector is, has a larger symmetry than just the Poincaré symmetry in four dimensions. <coughs> than, the, just, than the Lorentz group. Sorry. So, what that led us to is to propose that the conformal groups of the Jordan algebra should be a spectral geometric symmetry group of the corresponding maxwell einstein supergravity theory. And remarkably, the conformal group is isomorphic four-dimension UDLT group, which is also the automorphism group of the corresponding foreign touchable system. I should remind you that the conformal group always admit a three-grading with respect to the Lorentz subgroup, namely Lorentz group some dilatation. You have a three-grading special conformal generators and translations. Okay, and uh, again with Sergio, we, I mean, so this led to this proposal for the 5D external black holes that the conformal group should act as a spectrum generating symmetry group that's isomorphic to the four dimensional UD and group. With Sergio, we also gave the four dimensional orbits, the orbits of the four dimensional Maxwell Einstein supergravity theories as well as the NQZ theory. In that case, we found two extra orbits, in addition to the one uh, BPS uh, orbit. It, was, they, 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 it turned out to be non-BPS extremal uh, black holes with or without vanishing central charges that was uh, then constructed in, in the paper with Bellucci and Marani by much later. I want to talk about that, but we also gave the orbits of the n equals eight, uh, uh, theory in four dimensions. So shortly after I left CERN, I was visiting Herman Nikolai in Potsdam, in its older building, and uh, we asked ourselves the question whether the same thing can happen, whether the three-dimensional UDLT group could act as spectrum generating symmetry group 
conformal group of the uh, four-dimensional Maxwell uh, Einstein supergravity, or any quasi supergravity for that matter. There was a problem, namely that there is no non-conform. There does not exist. You can prove that any conformal realization of eight, which comes up as a UD algebra group in three dimensions. Okay, namely, it does not admit any grading, three grading with respect to subalgebra of maximum rank. The next simplex extension of the three grading is a five grading where grade two minus two spaces are one dimensional. And E8 can be given such a five grading. Okay. In fact, all Lie algebra except for H2, which is too small, admits such a five grading. Okay. And that these grade plus one spatial, uh, spaces can be mapped to a front triple system such that grade plus two spaces one dimensional. And this one dimensional spaces plus two minus two and the generated gives the grading, five grading from a special SL to our subalgebra. And in fact, uh, we gave a nonlinear realization of E8 on a 57 dimensional space, coordinatized by an element of the front triple system and an extra singlet coordinate. The capital X is the front triple element, small x is a singlet. And here, this triple product is, is this XXX I call it, the triple product of an element with itself. You see that all the commutation relations are written in terms of the front triple product. And this is a highly nonlinear realization, like there's a cubic and quartic operators acting on this 57 dimensional space consisting of capital X and small x. Now the front triple product is indicated as wrong as we cure wrong brackets. And they admit a screen variant by linear form as well as a symmetric quartic invariant. Okay. Now, well this is great, we gave it uh, and we could extend it to all the algebras. But the question was what's the geometric meaning of this? You see as I told you the Four dimension UDL group acted as a spectrum generating conformal group of the 5D theory. What's the geometric meaning of this quasi conformal? Of a, let me, the, if I have to explain the origin of the term quasi conformal. What's the geometric meaning of this nonlinear realization? See, in this 57 dimensional space, let's just talk about the case of E8. You define a quartic norm. This is the quartic norm of the four triple system minus the square of the singlet. And then you define a distance function between any two points in this 57 dimensional space. Okay. Let's, let's call them elements, you know, this curly x or calligraphic x, calligraphic y. You take the norm of that difference. Now the difference is the normal difference between two vectors, x minus y, in the frontal part. In the singlet part, you add the screen variant by linear form of the four entire elements. Call it the symplectic difference of two vectors. Okay, it's anti-symmetric under the interchange of x and y. Now remarkably, light-like separations are left invariant under this non highly nonlinear action of E8. So that, but it shows that this is a geometric realization that E8 is the invariance group of a light cone with respect to a quartic distance function in 57 dimensions. Okay. And well, now remarkably, the quasi conformal groups then turned out to be isomorphic to the three dimensional UDLT groups. And these conformal realizations of the four dimensional UDLT group appear in three different ways inside this quasi conformal realization. So that was the question then arose what is the meaning of the extra singlet coordinate? 56 corresponds to the charges of the BPS black holes or the external black holes. Now, if you take the x coordinate to be the entropy, so you're acting on a charge entropy space, the vanishing of the quartic norm in this 57 dimensional space relates the entropy to the quartic invariant of E7. That's the way it comes up in uh, super gravity theory. So that what that suggested that is that the, uh, I mean, by acting with the quasi-conformal group, you know, you will 
change this norm so it should correspond to a new solution. That's why we said that the three dimension UDLT group must act as a spectrum generating uh, quasi conformal group of 4D black holes. Now, the work with Sergio as well as the work with uh, uh, Kilian and uh, Nikolai, uh, but be before all the work by Sreminger and company on 4D 5D lifts, also the more recent work about you know finding spectrum generating solution, finding new solutions of super gravities using the three dimensional UDLT groups. Okay, but these lend support to the proposals that we gave. Uh, I will skip this one. Now, a concrete implementation of the proposal that 3D UDL group should act as a spectrum generating symmetry group of four dimensional PPS black holes was given in some work I did with Nitsky, Piolin, Public, and Andrew, who is here, uh, in 2005-2006. This was based on an earlier, much earlier work by Maison that who showed that the equation of motion for uh, a uh, spectrally symmetric stationary black hole of for this gravity are equivalent to geodesic uh, equation for geodesic motion of a fiducial particle on the moduli space of the 3D supergravity you obtain by reducing on a time-like circle. Okay. Now when you reduce on a space-like circle, the space you get is some non-compact group modeled out by its maximum compact subgroup. When you reduce on a time-like circle, you get a non-compact real form of this K3, okay. For the inclusive supergravity is that just this is a paraquaternion symmetric space, this is a quaternion symmetric space. Uh, and uh, anyway, this is the, I mean, I should indicate here the, uh, this is wrong, this should be M3. No, no, sorry, it's correct. So this is a four dimensional modular space, this is the three-dimensional uh, coset space of the scalars, if you reduce on a time-like circle, you see E88 goes to E88 over SO, I mean, sorry, this N equals H for gravity has E88 over SO star 16 as a moduli space, uh, and uh, the maximum exceptions for gravity has a different real form of E7 cross SL2R. And uh, now, if you quantize this geodesic motion, of course, your corresponding wave function must furnish a unitary representation of the isometry group, which is nothing but the three-dimensional UDLT group. Even the denominator changed, the numerator had not changed. And we found that uh, BPS black holes correspond to a special class of geodesics with that lift homomorphic to the twisted space of this uh, moduli space. And the Spectrum symmetric stationary BPS protocols are described by homomorphic curves in this twisted space. And the relevant unitary representations turned out to be so called quaternion discrete series representations of the, uh, the corresponding quasi conformal group. For rank 2 case, the, this representation was studied with the uh, uh, public and Nitzke in 2007, the, the rank 2 cases, uh, the simplest to study. We extended the, uh, I mean, well, with the, like as I said, the quaternion discrete series uh, representation were studied in this work in 2007. Let me explain to you how that comes about. Critical to the whole construction or analysis is finding the so called spherical vector of the quasi conformal realization twisted by a unitary character. You have to find the vector annihilated by all the compact generators, that's called the spherical vector. And then you look at the Verma module generated by acting with all the non-compact generators. Now, for generic values of the twisting parameter, the representation you get is just belongs to the boring principal discrete series. But for special values of the twisting parameter, there are some sub-modules, invariant sub-modules that form a unitary representation by themselves of the uh, the quasi conformal group. Okay, and. Uh, as I said, for rank two cases, we did the analysis completely and we agree with the earlier results by two mathematicians, Gross and Wallach. And uh, anyway, for the, uh, I'll come to the other cases actually, yeah. But with public, what we did, we constructed the spherical vectors of the quasi conformal realizations for all the quaternion real form as well as for the uh, split forms, which includes E88 in it, 
Okay. Now, we are not yet explicitly constructed this quadratic discrete series for these cases, but well, it's, I mean, you really have to use heavily Mathematica, but uh, we're working on it. But I should mention that for E88, you know, carrying out the same analysis should lead to the analog of the quaternionic discrete series, what I would like to call as the octonionic discrete series, okay, of the uh, E88. Uh, okay. Now, this was the Kozikov homo group action I was talking about. One other remarkable thing that came out of this Kozikov homorization was the fact that when you quantize the geometric action, you are directly related to what's called the minimum unit representation. Now, let me remind you again, E88 had this five grading. Now, we have here E77, this is 56. You know that 56 is a symplectic representation of E77. So you can split into 28 coordinates and 28 momentum. When you do that, and quantized it, then take the x, q, xp x to the i h bar, then you have 28 coordinates and an extra coordinate here 29. So that's the minimal dimension for a unitary representation of E8. Namely, minimal representation is defined as the unitary representation in the Hilbert space of functions of in the smallest number of variables possible. Okay. In fact, when we did this quantization, we were, we were led immediately to the min rep of E8. Remarkably, this extends to all non-compact groups. Okay. And we gave a unified construction for all cases with public. Well, you know, this, I saw that this symplectic representation, you represent the coordinates with CA. When you quantize it, of course, it's just a symplectic invariant metric you put on the right-hand side. And, uh, but remarkable, well, I should stress one thing, this, this generated E, F, together with delta, the uh, former SL bar subalgebra, okay, and it's, it's precisely out of the form that comes up in Fubini and companies, uh, conformal quantum mechanics, with the cortic invariant constructed out of these um, coordinates, uh, symplectic coordinates in the great post one space, playing the role of coupling constant. So, another remarkable connection came later, slightly later. This, there was some work done by Carl Perry and Olgowski back in 93. They, they wrote the action for n equals to sigma model coupled to n equals to supergravity in harmonic superspace. In this form, you don't need to know anything about uh, I mean, I don't, I don't want to go into details of harmonic superspace. I always have to remind myself because it's quite an elaborate formalism. But what you should pay attention is this fact that there is one derivative operation which is just linear here in the action, and there is an L4. So this has the form of a Hamiltonian mechanics with d plus plus playing the role of time derivative, okay? And uh, that the, the killing potentials that uh, generate isometries of the sigma model obey these uh, conservation laws with respect to the Hamiltonian L plus 4, which has, can be written in terms of, the, like I said, in this theory you have 2n hypermultiples and two supergravity compensators. So you can write this. This involves the quartic invariant constructed of the hypermultiples divided by the square of the compensator. Is you think very compensator. Now, remarkably, there is a one to one mapping between this n equals to sigma model coupled to supergravity in harmonic space formulation and the minimal utilization of its isometry group that comes from the quasi conform group approach. It, it's amazing with mean, the mapping. This compensator goes to the single coordinate y, its conjugate goes to the momentum y. Our the uh, coordinates, where is it? The symplectic coordinates correspond to the hyper, uh, hypermultiplet fields, and everything goes beautifully. In fact, it, it takes the, the correspondence takes a very beautiful form if you write an SU2 invariant form on the left hand side. So, what that suggests is that, uh, again, this is consistent with the proposal that, well, actually, so I'll come to that, yeah. But this really, if you could quantize this theory, 
the fundamental spectrum will be the minimal unitary representation of the isometry group, which is the quasi conformal group. And the full spectrum will be those obtained by tensoring it with each other. Okay. Now, any custom maximal Einstein spiritual gravity is reduced to three dimensions, you know, it's well known. On the C map, goes to some criterion sigma model. You can tidalize it, lift it back up to four dimensions, so you get a sigma model coupled to any custom spiritual gravity in the mirror image. Okay? But I told you that the, the spectrum of that theory must be that of the quasi conformal group. Uh, or made up of the quasi conformal group, which is the isometry group, then or those that are obtained by tensoring it with itself. Okay, so this shows that there is a must. There must be a mapping from the spectrum of the Maxwell Einstein supergravity theory and the unitary representation of the, the corresponding three-dimensional unitary group. So this again consistent with the proposal that three-dimensional unitary group should act as a, a spectrum generated symmetry group. Now the Tensoring is a horrendously complicated problem for say T8 case, for example. These are very nonlinear constructions. So let me come to that. That brings me back to about the tensoring issue. I remember, I, in fact, when I started thinking about it, it was too complicated. I said, well, I know one case where I know the tensoring very well. That is issue 2, comma 2, which is a conformal group. And in fact, it is a, divided by a maximum complex subgroup. It's a quaternion symmetric space as well, both quaternion and KLM. And you know, back in '84, we did some work right next to Green and Schwartz in Aspen. Thanks to their work, nobody paid attention to this work until Juan Maldacena's paper in '97, where we obtained the spectrum of 2B supergravity, ADS5 cross S5, by tensoring the so called CB subsequent double time supermultiples that decoupled from the Carl spectrum because it does not admit a Poincare element. But we could obtain the entire spectrum by tensing with each other. And we said, this is almost verbatim from that paper, that the unique candidate for another conformal group, we said that this theory lives on the boundary, and the, this ideas 5 group acts as the conformal group on the boundary, and the corresponding theory is nothing but the inclusive for young mills. The same thing was done for 11 dimensions for gravity going down to seven and four dimensions on spheres with Peter Van Ann and uh, Nick Warner, okay. But it, see, in these cases, to, we understand the tensing problem very well. So you can ask, what is the relation of these single tons and double tons that play such a fundamental role in ADS safety realities with the min reps? Well, remarkably, well, in fact, it was known that these the single tons are just the min reps of SP2 and R. And well, for the Conformal group is U2, comma 2. Mean rep turns out to be a conformal scalar. But the, the way we constructed it using the quasi conformal approach, it admits a one parameter family of deformations, zeta. For when zeta takes an integer values, corresponding representations correspond to masses fields with the helicity zeta over 2. Okay. And uh, there are infinitely many of them. So you can get all the masters, unitary, uh, unitary representative corresponding masters uh, fields, conformal fields in four dimensions, using the quasi conformal approach, starting from the mean rep. Same thing happens in six dimensions. That the deformation is not a, a single parameter, but an SU2 uh, eigenvalue, the, the SU2 subalgebra, whose eigenvalue is labeled the deformations. Now, the mean rep of SU2, 2 slash 4 turns out to be nothing but the CBD self-conjugate Young-Mills multiplet. Mean rep of OSP 8 star slash 4 is nothing but famous 2-0 conformal supermultiplet. So you see that mean reps play a very fundamental role by tensing which, I mean, it is known that for SP 2 n r or with the SO star 2 n for positive energy representations, tensing the mean rep, you can get all the other positive energy Unitary representations that are in the holomorphic discrete series. Now, in this case, not continuous. Well, the term deformation confuses a lot of people. I mean, I have very good reason why I call it deformation. You see, in the was well, to be sure, our state construction state space is just tensor products of the Fox spaces. In this case. It's a tensor product of some Fox spaces with the state space of a deformed oscillator. Now in this case, deformation is labeled by an SU2 quantum number. 
So uh, I don't know. I mean, at least here it's a parameter, but anyway, um, I had that debate with many colleagues, so I, I, I don't know. Maybe I should have come up with a better word. In any case, so to summarize the mirrors and the deformation describe the CFT side of ADS CFT dualities. Okay. Now, in fact, our work indicates that if a group appears in the, as an even part of an even subgroup of a supergroup, it must admit deformations. Its mirror must admit deformations. In fact, the only four groups that do not appear as part of an even subgroup, uh, I mean, four simple groups that do not appear uh, as subgroups of uh, even subgroups of simple D supergroups, these are the uh, 4, E6, E7, and E8. Okay, so the, their minerals should be unique, and the now the question is, I said that the minerals of E8, for example, should act as the, if you want, the quark of the spectrum of the corresponding 4G theory, and uh, now we don't have to quantize 4D and for the n equals to sigma models in four dimensions, right? So I, in fact, I conjecture that if you remain dimension reduced to lower dimensions, like two and one dimension, where you can quantize the action and test this conjecture. In fact, I talked to some colleagues here, here in the harmonic superspace community. They have not quantized any of the sigma models at the time, but since then they have done it in one dimension. In fact, since they put out a paper showing that the spectrum of any equal super conform of quantum mechanics, which has eight supersymmetries, fits perfectly into the mirror and uh, it, uh, the so called de deformations by a pair of bosons. This was done, and that was this. There were a lot of people working on this uh, for sigma models in one dimension. Yes. No, but F4 itself is not appearing inside. No. There's a super analog. The super analog is not in the core, but I know, it's not but G3, for example, has G2 in it. That's why we include G2. G3 has SU2 cross G2 as a subgroup. F4 has a SO5 2 cross SU2, but yeah. I mean, it's a super brother, but if you want, it's not, F4 itself doesn't appear as a factor in the even sign. You know, do you understand? Yeah. Uh, I know that, sorry, but, but I mean, you, well, uh, I don't know. I mean, D2 alpha was called exception also by Kakat, uh, but it's not really true. I mean, I, I, I was, yeah, anyway, I, mean, I was, I, I think I talked to you about these things. I was trying to construct the analog of the super analog of the E series in my original work here. I did it in Pisa, <laughs> but they, they don't exist. Uh, they don't exist. You know. no, but you, well, you're right. It's, ex it's called F4, but F4, the oh, bosonic F4 doesn't appear as a part of the even so. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that, that I know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So anyway, so did that it's, it's amazing that this quasi-conformal approach to mean reps leads to these very interesting connections. So I conclude with uh, open problems. So of course, constructing explicitly these uh, quaternion discrete series for the high groups or the octonic discrete series, and uh, now, as I said, what is the physical meaning of uh, this uh, mean rep for the eight. I mean, it should act like a quark. I said uh, quarks are the, the, the full spectrum of the 4G theory. What is the physical meaning? I think in the work I did with Andrew, uh, Pioline, Nitzke, we jokingly referred to the super BPS states. But anyway, the physical meaning is not clear to me at this point. I mean, it should play the same kind of role as the N equals 4 young miss plays for ADS5 cross S5. And, uh, yeah, embedding into the end uh, supersymmetry theory is, is an open problem uh, since we quantum completion will require us to go in that direction. And the collection with this uh, work of Thompson et al. and, uh, and Renata and this uh, connection with the black holes and conformal quantum mechanics and college models is also another interesting area of research to be related to the quasi conformal approach. And the most difficult part of the problem actually is how to extend this results in using the quasi conformal groups to the discrete arithmetic subgroups of the UDLT groups. Okay. I mean, I always, from string theorists, whenever I talk, the question comes up what about you know, charge quantization? You know, when you have increased UDL, you change the, you break the charge quantization. 
Well, I started from the mathematicians. I mean, unfortunately, I don't have anything to report on this, but at least amazingly, this quadratic distance function comes up in their work also, which is promising. Uh, well, anyway, I hope by next time I will be able to report on that last piece. Thank you. Questions? Yeah. You talking about the E eight? Well, not generically. Generically, the same as the following. For the groups that admit homomorphic discrete series representation. The minreps are not in the homomorphic discrete series, but they're in the so-called analytic continuation of the following discrete series. By tensoring which, you can get all the homomorphic discrete series. That's the statement. Of course, mathematicians have done it just for the ordinary Lie groups. Well, hopefully, soon we'll come out with a proof for the supergroups in that case. I mean, I, I believe the result. But homomorphic is the catchword. So if you now have anomalous dimensions, that's a whole story in itself. Because then you're not talking about the user representative of the group, you're talking about the infinite covering, and that, that, that gets quite complicated. But as far as all of these kids concerned, the story is quite clear. Yeah. More questions? Comments? And we thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Not too much stuff. I, I prepared a one-hour talk. <laughs>